What's going on guys? I'm DJ McCree and today we're going to be looking at a new doll. Uh, I, I've been saying that I was going to be doing different dolls on this channel or whatever, but this is just a first look video and what, you, what we have in front of us is Mix Bus by Harrison. Uh, Harrison Ideals, which, you know, they make consoles and stuff. They, they've been behind the great sounds of albums like Thriller and movies such as like Transformers and, and whatnot. <clears throat> so, you know, they have a great history of, of working with like excellent projects and, and achieving great sounds. One of the main things, the reason why I got this and paid, uh, paid $79 for it, um, which is the price for it right now, is because of the fact that one they're still in the, they're still in development so I actually uh you know suggest things with for them in their forums and they actually pay attention and you know <clears throat> and they actually great give great tips you actually could go to their youtube channel which is i believe is like harrison harrison mix bus or something like that harrison consoles and they they have have great videos of how to use this uh, my my first overall impression about this and to just because once again this is the first look I, I really do like the mixer the mixer is, is is straightforward and you know i don't have to necessarily use a lot of my other vsts which vsts in general really don't play very well with this at the at the very moment because this because this actual DAW itself is very system heavy um, and that's because of the of the the way the fx chains are built they have like a high quality eq in there already built that has very strong characteristics this this eq in general is very destructive so that means you can really get down to the nick nick grit with you know eqing and say that something is like overlapping you can really dial down in there and, and get the eqs the way you want it and and on top of that you can actually arrange whatever wherever's in there if you want the you know the vst or the set that you're using or your vocals the your vocal chain to be rearranged you can you know you can have it pre or post depending on your style um one of the things that this this uh particular da does very well is that it has like eight mix buses which you only can see four right now because i'm only using four you can count five you count the master bus but we're only counting the mix buses right now which is a pretty good way of actually looking at like a console in general and the mix bus has another subtle EQ, it has a subtle EQ. It's more meant more or less just to, to add a little simmer or gleam to to your mixes or whatnot. The sound quality overall is much different from uh, from this than your average doll, as is is colored in a sense of a analog. Like if you was actually having a Harrison mix mix console, it actually sounds much different from your regular sonically neutral doll. Like most dolls are anyways but that also kind of affects certain things like the dsp as you can see the dsp is at like 40 39 give or take that i am you know local recording and that adds to the cpu but that that is like huge like you know that only gives you pretty much uh, an option of just recording audio <laughs> and this is what that this what this is sells at um it has some pretty cool features in general like you know, I could stretch and look at the piano roll this way versus like you know double clicking on it in FL Studio, uh, which is cool. Um, I really don't have any gripes about it. Uh, however, you know, it's kind of strange if you're working with it or whatnot because <clears throat> this, this is not 100%, it's, it's somewhat user friendly, but I only know that because I actually looked at all the videos to see, to see what's going on. They do have like tool tips and stuff like that. As you can see, if when I go over certain tools, it tells you what the what the tools are: snapping the grid, snapping the grid units. You know, so that's pretty cool for what it's worth. And this is just a first look. I'm not really teaching a tutorial or anything on it. I just want people to actually see it. And I did like some. I I play with the MIDI a little bit. Because it wasn't really stellar. I just was seeing how good it would uh, it would act uh towards the tempo base it does support azio you know um i'm using fl studio azio right now so i can actually record 
So it's not that that's not the best ICO as you could go to uh, ICO for all or or whatever you're using in terms like maybe you might have the Cubase ICO which probably is the best one to have on your system in general if you're you know making beats or anything like that. But yeah, you know, in Pacifics is pretty good. I mean, you know, I really wish it had like a shortcut for the mixer, but it has shortcuts for almost every other thing except for pressing like M for the mixer or something like that, which is usually the traditional way of doing it. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, importing tracks isn't so difficult. You know, you can actually import a whole bunch of tracks. This also is uh, Pro Tools savvy, so you can actually put Pro Tools projects in here using OMF. So that's actually useful for me when I want to mix some somebody else's project down and just do everything in a box and send it back out. So, you know, that, that opens up a lot more doors for me to mix. So that's pretty much the basis of this. But that's all. That's basically about it for this, you know. I mean, you know, you can right click on this and obviously you pull up a, a MIDI channel and, and pull up a VST, uh, pull up VST. I know I noticed that it doesn't pull up multi out multi-output VSTs as I do not see Obscurium and I definitely don't see Poise which is a, a highly disappointing I see all the ones that there's just regular basically basic synths you know including like Karma which that's good it can actually pull up Karma but highly disappointing for the most part and last but not least, last but not least you know, you get a side, like you can just disconnect and connect your whatever you want to use as far as like your ports and stuff like that. Like, you know, you can assign your audio port, your MIDI port, <clears throat> and, you know, just go and then actually do something from there. And I missed unassign it. See, it's not really playing very well with something that that actually uses hard drive space to pull up their the synthesizer sounds. Yeah, so it it, it needs some it needs some uh, work or whatever, which I'm cool. I'm gonna be actually talking to to these guys a lot in their forums, just kind of like get it up there to where they could use it for production, but. It's meant mostly for just audio recording, so it's like really good for people that that do a lot of live bands and and record like live audio and stuff like that. Or if you just want to pull up a track in here, which you can only you can't pull it, uh, you can't put an MP3 in here, which is good because the MP3s are already compressed, so they want to use an uncompressed uh, file. So you pull up waves and stuff like that. It even F FLAC is supported when you want to pull in import stuff. But not MP3, but you can export MP3, and as also you can see, it's 32 float, which is very good when you want to have infinite headroom. But anyways, that's about it. I just want to show off this, uh, show off this doll real quick. It's pretty decent for the most part. It's only 79 bucks, so it is what it is. So that's basically about it. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments, leave a comment, and yes, subscribe. Yeah, I'm out of here.